بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم الحمد لله رب العالمین و صلی الله علی محمد و آله الطاهرین اللهم صل علی محمد و آل محمد و جمعه Tonight I want to speak a few words in relation to a theme which is very discreetly related to the poems that we'll end with, inshallah. But the link is very discreet. I'll leave that to your own discretion. It's in relation to silence. And silence may take many forms depending on the level of spirituality one is at. Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh has a book where in this book he discloses many of the experiences he has undergone, mystical experiences. And this book was kept private. But then once the leader when he, he visited the province of Mazandaran, he gave this book which he had in store for years and hadn't given to anyone and hadn't disclosed it. He gave this as a present to the leader and then it became known to the masses. Now what the wisdom was that he disclosed it after so many years, we don't know. But it's something which we can benefit from a lot. In one of his experiences, he writes, and this is just my own translation. During the early, sorry, just during the early hours of Sunday, 12th of Jamadi al Awwal, 1389 after Hijra, 27th of July, 1969, after executing the nightly nafile prayers and the obligatory and nafile morning Fajr prayers, I was occupied in a 40-day spiritual mantra that entailed reciting the majestic expression Allah a specific number of times after the morning prayer. After the reciting, I sat in a state of tawajjo, attentiveness, here usually when they speak of a state of attentiveness is a state where you attribute everything to Allah through means of those verses of the Quran such as Huwal Awalu Wal Akhiru Wal Dahiru Wal Batin He's the first, last, outer, inner Kulla Yawmin Hu Fishan Every manifestation it's him in dimension, at work. These kind of verses, they sit in a state and they're attentive to this. I sat in a state of tawajjo when all of a sudden, so saying Allah, Allah, and giving the mantra over a period of time, and after that he goes in a state of tawajjo, attentiveness, when all of a sudden, an attraction and state encountered me. Now from now on, he's detached now from the worldly life. He's awake though. It's like in your dreams. When you sleep, you detach from the worldly life and you enter the metaphysical. From here onwards, he's entered the metaphysical. An attraction and state entered me where the body shivered and led to a sound that was similar to He's now describing that transition to the metaphysical. It had a sound. He's describing that sound. Some of you may have encountered a similar sound. Similar to, by way of example, the sound made when a tractor passes over large stones on an uneven road. I saw my spirit disassociating from the body and elevating within a body like that observed in the realm of sleep. It's immaterial. It has physical properties such as size, shape, but there's no matter, there's no physical matter. It elevated to a certain extent. 
I saw myself from now on is in another realm. I saw myself amidst the house whose girders framework were all wooden and carpented. I mean, you, in your dreams, you can see a house with wood. That's all possible. But there's nothing material about this experience. I saw myself amidst the house whose girders were all wooden and carpented. However, I was like a bird which is captivated in a house, flying from side to side, but not finding a way out. He's captivated here. It seems as if this barzakhi, immaterial, or semi-immaterial experience, he's experiencing a form of hell. That were he to have passed away a physical death, he would undergo this in Barzakh. It's a form of being punished, but what for? But he's experiencing this hell before his physical death. This helps people. When you experience your heaven or hell, it helps you. If it's the hell that you're seeing, you amend your ways. If it's heaven, it'll act as a good, um, like a good incentive for you to do more. I was like a bird which is captivated in a house, flying from side to side, but not finding a way out. I was bothered in such a state for roughly a quarter of an hour, rushing from left to right. I saw that I was imprisoned in the house and I was not able to flee from it. It was then that I heard a talk from a speaker without actually seeing him, who said to me that your imprisonment is a result of excessive and futile talking. Why don't you observe your words? Now, futile talking for someone like Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh Omani is different to futile, futile talking someone like me. But the more you go, grow spiritually, there are some things you don't enter anymore into dialogue and discussion. It pollutes you, it contaminates you. But depending on the degree of spirituality you're at, the degree of this futileness varies. The more you grow, more and more things become futile for you. From the beginning of your seminary years, towards the end of your seminary years, if you're still occupied with certain talk, it's not a good sign. Now and again it happens, that's, that's forgivable, that's pardonable. But when it's a way of life, a lifestyle, where you enter into certain things, that's problematic. In that state, so he's still in that immaterial state, I asked Allah several times to save me by the life of the seal of prophets, falling down, beseeching and lamenting before him. All of a sudden, my eyes, after this beseeching from the Holy Messenger, my eyes fell towards the north of the house, where there was a window with enough space for one person to flee through it. And so I did. After leaving the place, I was in flight again towards the east in the direction of the Qibla. After becoming free from leaving the house and leaving the house, sorry, after becoming free from and leaving the house, I perceived the house as extremely large and luxurious, situated amidst the garden. So after suffering a bit, he's now seeing his heaven. He's still in that state. He's seeing a part of that heaven that he has. Because heaven and hell, they exist right now, moment to moment, action after action, moment to moment. You're the director. Right now, you're building your heaven or hell. You can't see it, though with this physical eye, because it's a semi-immaterial reality, heaven and hell. Or even an immaterial reality, it has degrees, 
It's not a physical heaven and hell necessarily. Although some people believe that, there's no insistence to go against that, but they would have to answer certain difficulties that position has and try to escape from certain articles of belief. After becoming free from and leaving the house, I perceived the house as extremely large and luxurious, situated amidst the garden that had no boundaries and was filled with a vast diversity of trees full of white blossoms, a scene I had never witnessed in my whole life. I saw myself flying in the air, in the semi-immaterial realm, at an altitude of the height of those trees, in a manner whereby my anterior aspect was facing the skies, whilst my posterior was facing earth. I would undergo peaks and troughs in accordance with my will, endeavor and command. I asked Almighty Allah, by the right of the Holy Prophet and all prophets, to unveil truths to me. And it was then that I returned to my normal state in that bodily condition. Those few minutes of imprisonment had an extremely negative effect upon me to such an extent that my physical body became tired and exhausted as well as my head and shoulders being in severe pain and my heart pulsating heavily. Oh my dear, attach point number 320 of my book a thousand and one points firmly onto your ears and that is now he's referring to a book of his a thousand and one points where he's, he recites he gives this paragraph one of the people of Wela, love of Allah with whom I was in friendship during Muraghibe Muraghibe is a spiritual tool it's a form of self scrutiny but scrutinizing oneself in seeing how much you are living based on in everything that you do. How much are you seeing? Initially acknowledging academically, but gradually becoming second nature to you. And then later seeing glimpses of I, so he was one of the people of love with whom I was in friendship during Moraghebe, attained to, attained access to the prophetic tradition. And then in quotes, he writes the tradition, whoever sees me, the prophet says this, whoever sees me in their dreams has verily seen me. After all, they say the Satan does not appear as me. The Holy Messenger has given this tradition. It applies to the Imams too. This friend of Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh Omali said, this friend of mine, he actually attained access to this. So he saw the Prophet. You see the Prophet, it is the Prophet. Because Shaitan can't appear as the Prophet. But there's one problem. Ayatollah Jawadi Omali has mentioned many times in his tafsir that how do you know it's the prophet? Yes, if the prophet appears before you, it's the prophet. The sh yes, the shaitan can't appear as the prophet. That's a given. But the shaitan can deceive you and say, I am the prophet. That, that's two different things here. The shaitan can't appear as the prophet, but the shaitan can appear as someone else and say I am the prophet and then give you a prescription how can you tell if you had seen the prophet the appearance of the prophet and then during the time of the prophet or even after the demise of the prophet if you had seen the prophet in your dreams then you could tell it was the prophet because you had seen the prophet himself it applies with the imams too during the time of Amir al-Mu'minin, there's a very well-known account where 40 people saw him at the same time, at the same night. Those 40 had visions of Amir al-Mu'minin. 
They didn't see the physical Amir al-Mu'mineen, even though that's not impossible to see 40 physical Amir al-Mu'mineens. But you have to explain it in a proper way. But here the scholars say they saw visions of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And nadaro ila wajh ali ibadatun. Seeing the face of Amir al-Mu'mineen is ibadah. Now all those munafiqeen would see Amir al-Mu'mineen every day in the physical form. Is it the physical form which is ibadah seeing him? So why didn't they grow? But the barzakhi reality of Amir al-Mu'mineen be it in his lifetime or after, that's always alive and always at work. So even now, we have access to see Amir al-Mu'mineen. But discerning that it is the real Amir al-Mu'mineen and that shaitan hasn't come and deceived you and say, I am Amir al-Mu'mineen, that's very difficult. It's a difficult call. Therefore, for reasons of Precaution, they say if you do see a vision of the Prophet or the Imams, that prescription that they give to you as a way of precaution, because it may not be them, you have to trace it back to either the Quran or the traditions of Ahlul Bayt. Or, as a minimum, it shouldn't be non rational or irrational. It has to be on a par with that. To some degree at least. This friend who is one of the companions of Wala of Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh says, I saw the Prophet. And he, this friend of Ayatollah Hassan Zadeh, asked his eminence in that vision. He asked his eminence, the Holy Prophet, for a mantra, for an invocation for a prescription. His Eminence, the Holy Prophet, replied, I give you the mantra of silence. Be silent. But still, we haven't opened up. What does this silence mean? We have traditions from Imam Sadiq, alayhi salam, where he reads, Inna siyam laysa min ta'am wa sharab wahda. Verily, this fasting, this abstaining, it isn't just from food and drink alone when you fast. There's something much more important at stake. In fasting, there's a prerequisite. There's a prerequisite that is you, it's required from you to preserve so that the fasting becomes complete with this prerequisite. If the prerequisite is not actualized, your fasting is incomplete. And that prerequisite is inner silence. And then he says, Amo tasma'u qawla Maryama bint Imran. Haven't you heard what Lady Maryam alayhi salam said in the Holy Quran? Inni nadhartu lirrahman sawma. That's barely, I have made a vow, a nadhr, for the all beneficent for the all merciful, the Rahman, a vow of fasting, soma. He she uses the word soma. And then fa therefore lan yawma in siya. As a result of that vow, the vow of soum, the vow of abstaining, therefore I won't speak to anyone today. That's a manifestation of that soul. And then the Imam says, A, that is, Samta, silence. That soul which she vowed was silence. And that's the prerequisite for all ibadat, including fasting. 
the prerequisite for your ibadat to be complete is that inner silence. That inner silence has to be acquired. And this inner silence, for example, in fasting, is where all your limbs are silent. But still, what does this silence entail? A silent limb is a limb that is detached from the worldly life. And it's recalling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is a limb, or it's you in reality, being occupied with Allah's attributes. When things happen, when you see things in this world, you know it's all Allah's attributes in play. You don't get bogged down by the worldly element of it. And you just see everything that's Allah's attributes in play. And the more you incorporate these divine attributes of Allah and that proximity and closeness with Allah that results, you become more and more detached. The more and more detached you are, the more silent you're becoming. The more you detach from Allah, the more you incorporate Allah's attributes. The more the ego is suppressed, the more the heart is ready to manifest Allah's attributes. You become a mirror, a locus for reflecting Allah's attributes. But then after that stage where you manifest Allah's attributes, you have to be careful not to open up too much. Even silence applies to that stage. You can't open up the secrets, the divine secrets. Even at that stage, futile talking is opening up, disclosing sometimes Allah's attributes. Futile talk for the beginner is not swearing. For the next step is not speaking unnecessary gossip. This going through the internet, this surfing, be careful. What may start as a sincere endeavor, it can easily be converted into futile endeavor. And every page you see, every line you read, it becomes incorporated within you. Just see how much rubbish you can collect within your soul. And getting rid of that rubbish, spiritually speaking, it's an extremely difficult endeavor. Just close your eyes and then try to eliminate everything that comes in your mind. See how long it takes. In another place, in the same book, he reads... On the eve of Sunday, the 12th of Safar, 1398 after Hijra, the 22nd of January, 1978, an event took place for me which I have rendered in verse in the 12th section of his book of poems, Daftar Dil, in the following manner. Shall I recount for you a story that took place once upon a time? One night I shut the door behind me, sitting in solitude, deliberating, pondering deeply into the origin and end of existence. Being totally unaware of myself, so he's detached himself completely in this state, in solitude. Now from now on, he's in that semi-immaterial state now. He gets a vision. I saw needle and thread approaching my lips. It's a barzakhi reality he's seeing. A part of his barzakhi hell has appeared before him again. I saw needle and thread approaching my lips, knitting with my body and soul burning. They said, this is the punishment for one who let their tongue go loose. Since your tongue under your supervision is not 
they will knit your lips. I was so distressed from this state as if I became quicksilver, you know, mercury, not having any stead steadiness or solidity. From this status of mine, I saw hell. I tasted the punishment of Barzakh. This part of the poem ends. Look. Through spiritual wayfaring, through that state of attentiveness, through those mantras, through that detachment in solitude, slowly but surely, th these are things for us to learn. But if we're always in the worldly life, we'll never get these states. It requires inner silence. But he tasted the punishment of Barzakh. If this tawfiq happens to us, this grace of Allah happens to us, through our own endeavoring, then we know where we've gone wrong. But it has to be through solid spiritual endeavor. I've related this story before, where someone who had inherited some books of prescriptions and invocations from his father who had passed away, he went and very carelessly and recklessly read those prescriptions, but he wasn't ready for it. He hadn't prepared for it. He had just inherited the book, and now he's reading and practicing it. And actually, he saw hell. This person is still alive. He saw hell. And he saw two angels taking him towards hell. And then suddenly someone taught him to say, Ya Karim, Ya Rahim. Then he wasn't thrown into hell. But then he woke up. When he woke up, for eight years, he was under very strict dosages of psychiatric therapy. Because he couldn't handle it. He would break glass, break things onto his head. He was totally uncontrollable. For eight years, he was under very, almost, you know, sed sedative, in sedative proportions, the medication he was taking. Lying in the house for eight years. And then after that, he slowly is recuperating. But even he still says that I'm not fully recovered yet. I'm not fully recovered. You can't play around with these things. Everything has a route to go through. Oh my dear, Ayatollah Hassan Zaladin continues, until the mouth is not closed, the heart will not open up. In an ode, I have composed another verse. He says, the mentor said, if you lock your mouth, the heart will open. I do not believe you will understand what this issue is about. Although the Farsi is much nicer. When I translate it into English, the whole thing is crumbled into, you know. But, it, but I don't think you'll understand because you're never going to practice it. You're never going to control your mouth. Most of us won't. Most of us aren't going to control our mouths. Ponder and deliberate over this noble tradition that is one of the luminous traditions. Inna Adama alayhi salam verily Nabi Adam lamma kathara wulduhu wa wuldu wuldihi when his children and his children's children became abundant, kanu yuhaddithuna indahu. Once they were speaking, the children and the children's children, they were all speaking with him. Wahuasakit. And Adam, alayhi salam, was silent. Faqalu, ya abba, they said, O oh father, malaka, La tatakallam. What's the matter? Why aren't you speaking? Faqala he, Nabi Adam, replied, Ya Baniya, O sons, Inna Allaha 
لما اخرجنی من جوارهی when Allah discharged me from his presence the story of the garden ahida ilayya he promised me and said وقال and said اقل كلامك cease your talking ترجع الى جواري and you will return in my presence but cease your talking especially the few time talking but it has degrees this silence okay so these were just two parts that of this book i wanted to read and in the hadith of the holy messenger during his mi'raj ya ahmad ya ahmad that starts with ya ahmad in many sentences there too you can come across a lot of the wisdoms and benefits of that silence now this silence has different forms to it in the poems of oman samani tonight I want to go through what he says in relation to Hazrat Ali Akbar. The story of Ali Akbar is, again, all of these stories, it's very difficult to really get to the bottom of it. The point is, what the Zahir say, the Zahir, the superficial aspect of the Maqtal of Ali Akbar, alayhi salam, it dictates that he went to the battlefield. He comes back to Imam Hussein when there are children dying of thirst. The Euphrates is ahead of him. He comes back to the Imam. He returns from the battlefield and says, give me water, I'm thirsty. And that's it. And a few people cry. Finished, is that the story? That's, if that's the story, you've missed the plot completely. Yes, okay, all these years we've been given this narrative. Well, that's, that's not my fault. That's not my problem. You sufficed with the Zahir. There's always been, on the margins, the Orafa, the mystics. The mystics who don't deny the Zahir. They don't deny the historical narrative, but they say there's something inside these stories. There's a botany aspect. That is much more important for us to get to. Now, I want to try and go through this. Although Farsi is my second language, these things are, you know, I advise you, you also go and try to read the poems of Ummon Samani. Go and find people who can open these secrets up to you. Don't suffice with my interpretation here. Imam Hussein first, in the, the poems that Oman have picked it from the middle section here, where Imam Hussein is now speaking. Nistam muhtajo bizzatam qani hast far ihtiyaj in Dushmani. He says, I'm not needy, Imam Hussein says. I am, I am essentially Ghani, Imam Hussein says. I am essentially needless from anyone because I am a manifestation of Allah's attribute, Ya Ghani. Therefore, I am not needy. Hast far ihtiyaj in dushmani. This enmity in Karbala here, if there's any enmity, it's a branch, it's a subsidiary of being needy. Look, this phrase in itself, it's a bomb. I'm not needy. I am a manifestation of Allah's attribute, al ghani. This enmity, if it exists here, if there's any enmity, look, this is a subsidiary, an aftershoot, an after effect of only those who are needy. Dushmani bashad mara 
با جهلشان کس چه رو کرد این چنین نا اهلشان any enmity that I may have is directed towards their ignorance it's directed towards jahl ignorance not people and how this ignorance has made them undeserving قتل آن دشمن به تیغ دیگر است دفع تیغ آن به دیگر اسپر است killing the enemy of ignorance is to be done with another sword not the physical sword he means through ilm knowledge through knowledge you have to kill the enemy of ignorance not with the sword protection from their sword from the sword of ignorance is through another shield not the physical shield is through akhlaq through ethics رو سپر می باشی و شمشیری مکن در نبرد روبهان شیری مکن امام حسین سنت علی اکبر go and be a shield don't use the sword in combat with the foxes who are usually very scared don't be lion like when you're combating them because the lion is fierce and attacks you know you're Ali Akbar remember you're part of Ahlul Bayt بازویت را رنج گشتن شرط نیست با قضا هم پنج گشتن شرط نیست it's not necessary to use your biceps to use your physical strength also not necessary is the fighting against one's destiny don't fight against it it's meant to be بوسه زن بر حنجر خنجر کشان تیر کاید گیر و در پهلو نشان kiss the throat of the swordsman coming when the arrows are sent your way grasp them and assign yourself the target of their arrows submit to destiny kiss the throat of those swordsmen pas beraft on ghayrat khurshid o ma hamcho nur az chashm o jaan az jism shah so he left the sun and moon's dislodged one that which the sun and moon wants to dislodge because it's so luminous that it's threatening the light of the sun and the moon that as if the sun and moon wants to dislodge this luminous figure because it's rendering their light in a negative way like the light from eyes and the soul from the body baz mi kard az suraya ta sara har sar peykan be ruy u dari the earth and heavens permitted opened up an opening for the arrow heads targeting him it's destiny it's meant to happen even the earth and heavens everything they opened up an opening there was no wall there was no protection for for the arrows to reach their destiny their um, destination مست گشت از ضربت تیغ و سنان بی خودی ها کرد و داد از کف انان intoxicated علی اکبر became whilst fighting sword and spear bewildered ecstatic the reins leaving his hand he had no control over himself anymore عشق آمد عقل از او پامال شد love arriveth and the aql wasted on nasihat go lisanash lal shod that advisor the aql that advises one its tongue has now become dumbstruck 
وقت آن شد که از حقیقت دم زند The time had arrived that Ali Akbar discharge, bring out, disclose the truth شعله بر جان نبی بنی آدم زند and burning, setting the souls of Bani Adam ablaze with the truth that was to be disclosed. Parde az ruy maratib va konad. Time had come for the veils to be struck down. Jumle o shagra rosva konad. And all the lovers becoming slandered. Because now the lovers, the, even the true lovers, they would see what true love is. After hearing the disclosure of the secrets of Haq that Ali Akbar in that state is disclosing. Baz Aql Ahmad Zaban Ashra Gerift. Aql came, being a met- metonymy here, in English being directed to Imam Hussein, who was in control. He came, he held on to the tongue of Ali Akbar. Wait, wait, don't disclose too much. Peer Meikharan Inan Ashra Gerift. So باز عقل آمد زبانش را گرفت پیر میخاران انانش را گرفت the, the mentor of the wine drinkers Remember the first night The mentor came and held on to the reins of Ali Akbar رو به دریا کرد دیگر آب جو The stream water once again was facing the ocean Ali Akbar was facing the ocean, Imam Hussein. Zi pedar shud ab guyo ab ju. And the one speaking of water was now facing the father. Vakhti az danandai kardam sual. Once I asked a learned one. Ke mara agah kun ay danay hal. O knower of states, inform me of something. The Arif has a question. Ba ham sa'i ke dar raftan nemud. With all his endeavor that Ali Akbar had, exiting for war, raj'at Akbar ze meydan az che bud? This Akbar's return, Ali Akbar's return from the battlefield, what was it for? این که میگویند this, this thing that they say بود از بحر آب it was for water شوق آب آورد او را سوی باب this yearning for this physical water took him to his father made him return from the battlefield خود همی دید این که تفلان از اتش هر یکی در گوشی بن موده غش you say it was only for water this is what they say. It was only for physical water. He came yearning towards his father for physical water. But surely he himself saw the infants all thirsty, each of them in a corner, dehydrated. Why, why should he ask for water? Even if there was water, it would go for the infants, not for Ali Akbar. Why should Ali Akbar ask for physical water? He was Ali Akbar. He was meant to be the fourth Imam according to Imam Khomeini. There was a change in affairs. Destiny changed. But he was meant to be the Imam. Then he would ask for physical water and then we cry. It's okay. But don't suffice with that crying. Get to the bottom of the matter. It's a disgrace if you suffice with that. If you suffice with that. I'm not saying don't believe in it. I'm saying sufficing with it is a disgrace. It's a waste of one soul. No doubt about it. You've lost the whole plot. You haven't understood but a bare minimum of Karbala. A historian can understand that. Even a non-Muslim historian can understand and shed a tear for that. That's not a tear of Ma'rafa though. Tear zira dasto zira pa ogha. Sword in hand, riding the Oqab, the eagle, which was the name of his horse. Mojzan shattash be pishru ze'ab. Facing Ali Akbar were waves of water, of the river, Euphrates in front of him. Then he would then return and say, give me water. 
when he knows the children dying of dehydration, then he, when water is ahead of him, for him to go back and then ask for water, look, it's shameful. The Arif is questioning this. He wants an answer. He goes to the mentor. He wants an answer to this. بایدش رو آوریدن سوی شد خیش را در شد در افکندن چو بد هی را در علی اکبر شولی هی must go forth forth forwards towards the river and like a duck throw himself in the river if he was to be thirsty in the physical sense گر در این رازی است ای دانای راز دامن این راز را می کن فراز او نو اف سیکرت اف در لایز ا سیکرت این دس ریترن اف علی اکبر اوپن دس سیکرت اپ فور می آی وانت تو نو گفت ناو دس از دی انسر دت دی منتور گیو بیفور گیوین جس گوین تو هیز انسر This answer of the mentor, this is in the language of poems after all. But people, scholars like Oman, he's gone through all the ahadith, he knows what he's talking about. And then he's bringing that and manifesting it in poem style. The mentor first gives an example of an allegory. The allegory of Jamshid. Jamshid was a king. There were people who wanted to see the king. In order to see the king, they would have to drink from the chalice of love. Then Jamshid, with the help of a cup bearer, would inscribe seven lines as seven stages to the degree, each having a degree of love. The cupbearer knows that each person who wants to see the king, how much their potential, their existential potential is. And therefore the cupbearer, with strict precision, would say, you drink until the second line. You can drink until the third line. The seventh line being the sediment of the wine, where you drink all of it. That's the highest stage. So he, I just wanted to explain that beforehand, this kind of allegory. He explains this and then he takes it to Karbala in a particular manner. Goft, the reply came from the mentor. Chon Jamshid naqsh jam ra, naqsh jam zad, pas sala bar khayl dordashan zad. He replied, the mentor replied, when Jamshid, inscribed the lines of the chalice. He called upon inviting the sediment wine drinkers. Haftchat anjam ra tartib dad har yeki ra gunegun nami nahad. He orderly arranged the seven lines of the chalice each bearing its own station and title. Pas nemud az ruy hikmat ikhtiyar saqi danandi kamil ayar. Then out of wisdom he, Jamshid the king, chose a saqi, a cupbearer, pure and perfect in knowledge. Dar kafash me'yar vajd u ibtihaj بادخاران را شناسای مزاج In his hand, in the hand of the cupbearer, being the criterion for yearning and verve. Having full knowledge, full knowledge of the dispositions, the potentials of the wine drinkers. مجلس آراست مانند بهشت وندرو ترتیب و قانونی بهشت He arranged an assembly like heaven In it he prescribed rule and order جم درو که تر و مهتر همه 
بر خط ساقی نهاده سر همه He assembled the common and the elite in the assembly to the assembly All those present being subservient to the cup bearer how much until which line they can drink جام را چون ساقی آوردی به جور از فرودین خطش تا خط جور The cup bearer brings the chalice into the assembly with the lines inscribed from فرودین to جور فرودین is number one, the first line جور is the name given to the last each of them are particular levels هیچ کس را جامی تعن و دق نبود از خط او سر کشیدن حق نبود There was no room place for opposition Why did you give me only two lines to drink? Why, why three lines? Rebelling against the sarghis the, the cup bearers line prescription was not حق was not right No one would do it. Everyone was subservient. Ari az qismat nemi bayad gurikht. Yes. Alas, one should not flee destiny. Ain al tafast saqi har chedikht. Whatever the saqi pause until whatever line, that is grace per se. That's how much you can take. Don't flee destiny. ور یکی را حال دگرگون شدی if someone somebody state becomes transformed اختلاف در مزاج افزون شدی and the change of one's disposition as a result of that transformation, transformation of state would be enhanced جستی از آن دار اشرت انحراف if that, if that was to happen you would have diverted deviated from the heavenly majlis. Digarash rukhsat nabudi in salaf. And there would be no room place anymore for you to return if you had, if you had overdone things. But the saghi was there to make sure everyone drinks that limit which they can. Var yiki zanan mu'arbid khu shudi as saramasti parishan gu shudi. If one were to exit one's limit, so to speak, Shouting out aloud, out of intoxication, becoming bewildered. And then anything could happen then. Because they've passed their limit. Once you pass your limit, you'd become audacious in the negative sense. You'd shout out things that should not be disclosed. As tariq aql hishti pa burun, ham rahi kardi zemasti ba junun. One exits the path of aql. And by doing so, intoxication becomes in juxtaposition to insanity. La jaram sad gune sharm o infaal saqi an bazm ra gashti vabal. And inevitably, if this was to happen and you exit your limits, this would be shameful for the cup bearer who had full knowledge of everything. And as a result of this, it leads to the saghis, the cup bearer's death. They'll kill him. Jumle ra budi azan darul aman ta besar manzel resanidan zaman. It was a rule for all that in the assembly, in this assembly, everyone with the help of the cup bearer will end and reach one's potential. Nothing more, nothing less. کس نیاوردی برآوردن نفس دست آنجا دست ساقی بود و بس No one can speak a word in retaliation It was the word It was the command of the cup bearer and that was period لا جرم فعالهای ما یورید لحظه غافل نمانند از مرید Inevitably, those in charge and command are never for a moment oblivious to the traveler who wants to see the king. Those 
with the Saqi's endeavor, accompanying, escorting the path of the Salik, were he to tread upon danger, the Saqi would inform him, won't let that happen. Kund agarmand be tadbir shavand. Were he, were the traveler who wants to see the king, were he to progress with delay, the cupbearer would manage him. Tund agarrand enon gira shavand. If the traveler who wants to see the king would go too fast, the saqi will hold on to his reins. Saqi bazm haqiqat bin to baz. Kei kamast as saqi bazm majaz. Now he wants to make the transition to the story of Karbala. And he's saying to us, Oman is saying, this was all the Jaral Jamshid. And that metaphorical, the allegorical cupbearer. You now, me and you, see the sari of truth, of the true assembly. The, the 72 in Karbala. When is such a Sari, the true Sari, Imam Hussein, when is he ever lesser than this metaphorical, allegorical Sari of Jamshi? He's never lesser. So whatever we said about the allegorical Sari, it applies even more to the true Sari, the true cupbearer, Imam Hussein, alayhi salam. Akbar Ahmad, he's entering the scene now. Akbar Ahmad, Al Atash Uyan Zera. Akbar returned from the battlefield saying Al Atash, Al Atash, thirst, O Father, thirst. As Maidan Razmga Topi Shah. He returned from the battlefield back to the king saying Al Atash. Kay Pedar John as Atash Afsorda saying, O oh dear Father. I have become tired of this thirst. This thirst of water is not the physical water. Those who have listened to the poems from day one, you should have an idea now. This is the water of Ma'rafa. He had more to grow Ma'rafa wise to, until he reaches his potential. But he wanted this Ma'rafa through Imam Hussein. He said, I'm tired at the level that I'm in right now. Me nadonam zendam your mordam. I don't know. Am I alive? Am I dead? There's room for improvement here. In atash ramzas to arif forifas, the poet says. There's a secret in this atash of Ali Akbar. The arif knows about it. Says the hakast in va ishash koshevas. This atash, this thirst, is a secret of hak. And the lovers understand it. Deed Shahideen ke Sultan Khodast, the king of religion, who is the Sultan of guidance, so Akbar Khodra ke Labriz as Khodast. He saw his Akbar filled with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's manifesting Allah more and more. عشق پاکش را بنای سرکشی است. His pure love on the brink of exploding, on the brink, brink of transgressing. آب و خاکش را هوای آتشی است. His body in the brink of burning. شورش صحبای عشقش در سر است. Mastiash as the garon afsultat. The turmoil of the wine of his love in his head, his intoxication more than ever before. Inakaz majlis judoi konat. Now Ali Akbar is isolating himself from the majlis. Fashe davi yehudoi mi konat. Disclosing his claim to godliness and manifesting Allah more and more. Mags bar khud mi shekaft pustra, fash mi sazad hadith dustra. His brain outshelling his skin, disclosing his love for his friend, 
disclosing more and more his love for Allah. But this has a limit. You can't transgress it. محکمی در اصل او از فرع اوست لیک انوانش خلاف شرع اوست The strength of his essence stems from his father However, disclosure of such a love will go against the sharia You can't disclose it Pass, therefore, Suleiman bar dahanash busida اندک اندک خاتمی بر لب نهاد The Suleiman of the times, Imam Hussein, came and kissed him, placed slowly but surely his ring in his mouth, meaning stop, don't disclose further, you reach your potential now. مهر آن لبهای گوهر پوش کرد به امام The Imam, upon those lips, which was to disclose pearls, sealed. Ta nayarad, sir the haqra fashkat, so that he doesn't disclose further secrets of haq, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa sallallahu ala muhammad wa ala ta'ala. Allahumma salli ala Fatima tawabiha Wa ba'alha Wa baniha Wa sirra
حسین حسین جان حسین جان حسین جان حسین جان جدا شدن از کوی تو خدا نکنه دوستم منو جدا شدن از کوی تو خدا را چه کند از تو هم جدا نکنم آقا جایان حسین فاطمه صفای دل توی او دل زهر چه داشت صفا صفا ندارد اگر با قمت صفا نکنم به خدا ما با این روزا اگر این روزا نباشه اگه این جریان نباشه ما مرده جواب نال دل های خسته برلب تو آن کوت را صدا نکنم حسن جان رضا مباد خدا از کسی که در همه اوم تو را به قطره اشکیز خود رضا نکنم آقا جانم آقا جان گذشت عمرو اجل پر زند به دور سرم گذشت عمرو اجل پر زند به دور سرم بمیرم و نروم کربلا بمیرم و نروم کربلا خدا نکنم حسین جان حسین جان حسین جان حسین جان اما شب شب آقا زاد علی اکبرم اولین کسی که از بنی آشم آمد از پدر جازه گرفت بره طرف میدان آقا علی اکبرم آمد اجازه میدان گرفت از پدر 
گفت بابا جان اجازه بده برم میدان میگن تا اجازه گرفت آقا فرمود برو پسرم اما پسرم آهسته راه برو بذار کمی قد و بالا تو ببینم از این اگر چه می کشم آه برو جان می دهم از این غم جان کار برو بگذار کمی ببینم اوصل کن بگذار ببوسم دای تو چه مردی شده ای قدری پسرم مقابلم راه برو روایت دیگه همین کلی اکبر شروع کرد بره طرف میدان دیدم دیدن ما محسن داره چند قدم دنبال علی اکبر راه میره هی به قد و بالای علی اکبرش نگاه میکنه فبکل حسن شروع کرد گره کردن خدا شاید باش شبیه ترین افراد به رسول الله داره میره میدان میگن یه نگاه معیوسانه ای به علی اکبر کرد یعنی بابا میدونم بری دیگه بر نمیگردیم علی اکبر رفت وسط میدان خیلی ها رو به درک واصل کرد اما یه نامردی گفت گناه عرب به گردن من اگه داغشو به دل باباش نذارم میگن پنهان شد میگن چنان با یه نیزه به پهلوی علی اکبر زد یه نامرد دیگه جلو آمد چنان با شمشیر به فرق علی اکبر زد میگن خون شروع کرد بیرون ریختن آخ دیگه این بدن داره رمق از بدن بیرون میره میگن افتاد رو گردن از خون چشمان از با گرم یا الله میگن میگن از به جایی که برگرد طرف خیمه میگن رفت وسط لشکر دشمن یا صاحب از زمان چه کردن با علی اکبر بگم فقط اوها به سیوفه قطع کردن یه دفع صدای ناله علی اکبر بلند شد صدا زد یا بتا علیکم من سلام یعنی بابا منم رفتم خدا آمد خدا رحمت کنه من اون شوش دریون میگن میگه تا صدای ناله علی اکبر از میدان بلند شد دیگه رمق از زانوان حسین رب میگن با یه سختی سوار برمرکب شد اومد تو میدان میگن امام حسین خودشو از رو از رو زمین انداخ آخه دیگه زانوانش رمق نداشت به ایسته. اما همه دارن نگاه میکنن دیدن آقا با زانوانش داره میاد کنار جوانش یا الله یا الله خدا رحمت کنه من اون شوش دریو دیگه نگید مصیبت علی اکبر بگید مصیبت جان دادن حسین با زانوانش آمد 
کنار بدن علی اکبر آخت نگاهش به بدن قطعه قطعه علی اکبر افتاد میگن تا اون موقع کسی صدای گریه حسین رو نشنیده بود اما فبکا کان آلیا دیدن حسین داره بلند بلند گریه میکنه آی حسین آی حسین آقا جان آقا جان میگن هی صدا میزد ولدی علی ولدی علی دید علی اکبرش جواب نمیده یه نگاه کرد دید لختهای خون در دهان علی اکبره میگن انگوش انداخت این لختهای خون رو بیرون کشید دوباره صدا زد پسرم علی اکبرم بابا داره صدا میزنه جواب بابا رو بده اما دید علی اکبر جواب نمیده چه کنه امام حسین میگن سر علی اکبر رو رو زانو گذاشت دلش آروم نگرم سر علی اکبر رو به سیل چسباد دل بابا آروم نگرم همه دیدن حسین خم شد آن صورت به صورت علی اکبر قتل الله قوم القتلوك حسين اجب با زانو رسيد دیگه تمون نداره همین حال بابایی که دیگه تمون نداره الهیت کسی جور داغ بچه کناره بدن بچهش بشین میگن هر طرف این بدن از رو زمین بر میداشت طرف دیگر بدن رو زمین میماد یه نگاه طرف خیما کرد صدا زد جوانانه بنی هاشم بیایید علی را بردر خیمه رسانید خدا داند که من طاقت ندانم علی را بردر خیمه رسانم Hussein, John, Hussein.